This is the spirit of free China. These are its people, free, prosperous, proud of their past. And this is their leader, President Chiang Kai-shek, who unified a nation, defended it against enemies foreign and domestic, and charted its course to the future. Taipei, capital of free China's province of Taiwan, hub of the island's activity, hometown of nearly two million. The picturesque pedicab was phased out years ago. Motor traffic moves swiftly in town and on highways that crisscross its 240 miles from tip to tip. Major airlines carry arriving travelers to international airports in Taipei and Kaohsiung, 200 miles to the south. Revitalized Taiwan began efforts to attract tourists around 1954. 10,000 came that year and by 1971 the annual figure reached half a million. The Chinese happily accommodated the influx by building 43 hotels in the 1960s then added 15 more. In Taiwan, there are shops for bargain hunters who insist on haggling, and bargains for shoppers who seek native-made handicrafts rather than watches from Switzerland or cameras from Japan. For Taiwan is China, the place for wood carvings, ceramics, coral jewelry, and the traditional chipao, the dress with the eye-catching slit up the side of the skirt. Although Taiwan has three television networks, movie making is still a major industry. Studios produce 300 Chinese features a year and import about half that many foreign films for the island's 735 movie houses. Perhaps the charm of Taiwan is the absence of the professional polish many international tourist cities possess. For over 60 years, Chiang Kai-shek has labored to unite his country's provinces which sprawl over much of the surface of Asia. His fervent dream, his compelling mission, is the defeat of communism on the China mainland. With the support of the Kuomintang, the nationalist political party, Chiang was first elected president of the republic in 1948. He retired after less than a year in office was re-elected in 1954 and for two successive terms since then. By design in the early 1950s, Taiwan began its climb in economic and social progress on the farms. Instead of building steel mills, they made steel plows. The formula was simple, create self-supporting farms. Next, build light industries for local needs and the government realized that the farmer who owns his land will produce more. Free China's land reform principles have been one of her most successful exports. 87% of the island's farmers have bought and now own the land they till, and no landlord was killed in the process. Mechanization has helped, with powered harvesters, threshers, and rice cutters geared for the small farm. Over the years, agriculture has achieved an annual 5% growth rate, better than the population increase. Rice is the staple food in Asia, and Taiwan's rice production has increased 41% in 10 years. Her farmers are the most prosperous in Asia.